Okay, welcome to the Elm Tree Line. I've had a few requests recently from people asking how is my live steam locomotive powered? Um, how does it run? How do I set it up? Are they easy to operate? Um, you can see at the moment um, this is a roundhouse engineering Fowler locomotive. Um, pretty much in the condition um, first built in. It has got um, an operating headlight uh, on the front. Apart from that, um, pretty much no changes. Uh, what I'm going to do over the next couple of minutes is just explain briefly to you how to set up uh, a locomotive such as this uh, into an operation or status where it's ready to run uh, in steam. Um, obviously there are differences from locomotive to locomotive. Uh, manuals are of course there for your information and also for safe operation of your live steam locomotive and uh, although this video gives a brief introduction as to how to get your locomotive into steam uh, it certainly shouldn't be used instead of the instruction manual. There will be differences from manufacturer to manufacturer as well. This is a roundhouse locomotive. There will be differences in setting up uh, an Accucraft loco, a Regner loco um, or any other live steam locomotive from a different manufacturer. So it's worth checking out um, the instruction manual with those before you um, start to get your locomotive in, into steam. If I pan back now, the three um, key things that we'll need, of which I'll replace one of them now, which was in shot. Um, first of all, uh, water. I use um, water from a dehumidifier um, that's kept in a dark cupboard, um, stops any algae growth. Um, and this is the syringe that Roundhouse Supply um, that I'll use to put the water into the boiler. Worth checking that um, the end is uh, attached firmly uh, onto the syringe itself. Um, you may want to pop a bit of glue around the end here just to make sure that it doesn't come loose. Um, most importantly, as far as I'm concerned, the water will be the first thing um, that I will use on the locomotive. If I get called away now, um, if the telephone rings, if I get distracted and I come back to the locomotive, um, at least I will have water in it. Secondly, steam oil. Uh, this is a special type of oil um, made for live steam locomotives. This is roundhouse uh, steam oil. The viscosity is uh, 220 on this. Depending on the locomotive you're using, um, you will use this or another steam oil. Depending on what came of your locomotive, um, steam oils do differ depending on the locomotive type um, and manufacturer. And third, is the gas. Um, I'm using butane gas in this locomotive today, pure butane. Um, you can use uh, in this locomotive uh, a butane propane mix 70-30, 70% being the butane. Depending again on the locomotive you're operating, um, you will need to check uh, what type of gas your locomotive can run on. Um, some gas tanks are only suitable for pure butane, others suitable for butane propane mix. Once again, if you're unsure, um, check with the manufacturer or retailer um, that your locomotive came from. Move this gas out of the way for a moment. Okay, so, the first sort of things I will be checking um, I've run this locomotive today already, um, but I'll be checking that um, I know the batteries are in good condition. Um, in this locomotive, the batteries for the radio control are kept in the tender. The additional 9 volt battery you can see in there um, is used to power the, the lamp on the front of the locomotive. Uh, and there's an additional extra that I've added. Um, so I've checked the batteries. I'll also be checking that the locomotive is in neutral gear, um, making sure that um, from the last operating session um, I haven't left the locomotive in forward or reverse gear. Um, and I would also be checking uh, around the other side um, that I've closed the gas valve. Okay making sure that I've closed it so when I fill the locomotive with gas in a moment uh, none's going to escape um, through the locomotive and straight up the chimney. Okay so as I explained the first thing I want to do is 
put water into locomotive. This locomotive has a central dome that you can remove. Uh, the water filler cap is there on the top of the boiler. I simply undo that and then using the syringe uh, I place inside water so it is nearly at the top of the boiler. You want to leave uh, a small amount of air um, as this is where the pressure um, will grow once the locomotive is um, lit and is starting to steam that is where the steam will be you always want to leave a gap at the top of the boiler um, check the instructions for your locomotive as to how much gap you should leave round us recommend 30 millilitres be removed um, from full boiler to leave sufficient space okay so I've now filled the boiler with water I'm going to put the cap back on tighten that up Okay, just finger tight, nothing more, uh, and replace the dome back on top of the locomotive as such. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put steam oil into the steam oil reservoir, which is easy for me to show you on this locomotive. Um, on locomotives such as the Lady Anne, um, they are internal to the cab. Uh, fortunately on this locomotive um, you can see quite clearly um, what I'm doing. So, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure there's no water in the reservoir from the last steaming session. So, if I remove the cap, I can then undo the bottom. And what I'm looking to achieve is all the water coming out of this reservoir and leaving any oil in. Now you can see the water's dripping out. I'll just undo it a bit more. So I want to remove all the water from the reservoir and leave any oil that may still be in there. Okay, so all the water's come out now. So I'll tighten that back up again. And then from the top, I'm going to fill with steam oil. And I want to fill this nearly to the top, allowing enough space for the cap to go back on um, and not push any of the steam oil that's filled in the top down the sides of the steam oil reservoir. There we go. So we're just shy of the top of the reservoir. And now I'll pop the cap back on and that's the steam oil completed. Um, the third and final part is putting the gas in. So we just tighten the top back up in the oil reservoir. Okay. The last thing I want to do now is put the gas in. So as I said before, I'm using pure butane at the moment. The gas filler valve is on the central top of the cab roof on this locomotive. The tank uh, actually sits, uh, there you go, these long square object underneath the cab roof um, is the gas tank on this locomotive. Um, they vary from locomotive to locomotive. So, um, I am currently resting um, my arm on the chimney to stop the front of the locomotive um, coming up when I push down with the gas canister and what I'm trying to achieve is um, put the gas in until I see liquid gas escaping from uh, the top. Once I see the liquid gas coming out um, I know that the tank is full. This will take anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds depending on the size of the gas tank that you're actually filling. There you go, you see, the liquid gas comes out the top of the tank, um, showing us that um, we have filled the tank to the top. Uh, this is a remote controlled locomotive, 
Um, obviously if you're running a manual locomotive um, you wouldn't necessarily be checking the batteries on board. Um, I failed to mention at the very beginning you also may want to check the batteries in your remote control. Uh, this locomotive is remote controlled. Um, having checked the batteries uh, in both locomotive and transmitter obviously we can make sure that we have a smooth operation once the locomotive is in steam. Um, so now we have um, put in the three um, parts that we need to get the locomotive steamed. Uh, we started off with the water, most important. Uh, the steam oil, um, specialist formulation of oil um, needed um, to travel through the pipes in the locomotive to the cylinders. And finally the gas which is going to fire this locomotive. Um, so all we need to do now is light the locomotive so that we have a fire um, burning and we can raise steam. Um, so I'm going to gently open the gas valve which is down this side of the locomotive and then I'll place a flame over the top of the chimney um, and wait for uh, the locomotive to fire. Now as you can hear, that fire has gone out. So we light it again. We turn the gas down a little bit. And you may have to relight two or three times till the fire takes hold properly. And there we go, the locomotive is lit now. Sometimes the liquid gas escapes from the top of the gas tank uh, and actually travels through to uh, the fire um, and basically douses the flame. So this locomotive will take between four and eight minutes to come up to um, pressure where we're able to use it. What I will do is after the fire has been going um, for 30 seconds or so, which is around about now, I'll turn the burner up and you can hear the fire is now burning, heating the water in the boiler um, to a pressure where we're able to use this locomotive. Okay so we're at the stage now where the fire's lit and um, the water in the boiler is turning into steam and we've got 20 psi on the gauge. So at this point I'm going to turn the gas down a bit. Okay so we turn the gas down a bit um, and at this stage uh, I want to be turning on the radio control for the locomotive. So uh, most importantly, turning the controller on. Um, if I turn the locomotive on first, um, there's always a possibility that it might receive um, an unwanted signal. Uh, so if I turn the radio control transmitter on first, I know that it's going to lock straight into the transmitter. Um, this transmitter is set up slightly differently. The regulator on the left hand side uh, is closed in the up position. Uh, generally they are set up so they're closed in the down position. Um, on the right hand side of the transmitter to go forwards I push the stick left and to go reverse I push the stick right. So at this stage I've got the transmitter turned on. I need to turn the locomotive on and the switch is just here. I'll turn that on and the locomotive should find the transmitter. There we go. So we've now got just under 40 pounds per square inch on the gauge. 
um, and the locomotive will start blowing off now the safety valves will lift um, at 40 psi so at this stage what I want to do is clear any cold water out of the pipes and the cylinders so if I put the locomotive into forward gear and open the regulator slightly the locomotive will slowly and jerkily move off I close the regulator now put the locomotive in to reverse gear and do the same just opening the regulator slightly the locomotive clears the pipes and cylinders of the cold water replacing them with steam and she's now ready to use